Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Game, and we are returning to our Let's Play of Mongolia in Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich mod. So, we are in the process of dealing with a rebellion in Western Mongolia. Socialist rebels have risen up. Um, once again, I think it's the third rebellion in the history, or this alternative history of Mongolia. Um, which is a little bit troublesome, because the Buddhists and the aristocrats are trying to use that to their advantage as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to reinforce our troops in the west over here. Hopefully that is going to be somewhat useful for us. Then we are going to reinvade Tuva, so the upper, so the northwestern province over here that the rebels have taken over uh, just lately, and we're going to see what that means. So the forces that invaded Cambodru, though rather strong, seem to be getting supplies and reinforcements from bandit outposts just north, or or of Covert. Though we could move directly into Kurum to fight them head on, we could also have the option to cut off their forces before attacking them from all sides. I think cutting off their forces sounds like a decent strategy, so let's try to select that. We also have to deal with the siege of Ulstai over here, which I think we're going to wait a little bit until we do have political power, because I don't know exactly uh, what we can do over here and what so what we need to do with that. So um, there's a further clash with settled Kagal Mongols in the province of Shiga. Ethnic tensions have recently arisen between the Mongols, the majority in the region, and the other Mongols who <laughs> live primarily in Outer Mongolia itself. There's always been tensions between these two groups, primarily because the first Mongols <laughs> have aided. Sorry about that. It's just um, you know, there's always in fighting. You can you can fa you can divide any any society. Just granularly and you will have a conflict between groups. So the first Mongols have aided the Chinese and regularly fought against the Mongol rebels with many of the generals and military units based there. Now moving to the west, violence has erupted in the east, I suppose, once again. The province of Chaha? Where is that? I don't think there is any specific region that is labeled that. Anyway, uh, are we not all Mongolian? You know, I know um, there's a village in Switzerland, and it has like 150 inhabitants or so, and they still divide that into the western part of the eastern part, and they don't get along, you know, they suppose they are all different people, and it's just not the same. So even in a group of 150 people, you get that sort of behavior. Anyway, um, let's see whether our indirect approach here in the northwest is um, sufficient. The enemy is cut off by moving our forces to their supply lines and moving in from all sides before we are ready. Uh, before they were ready, we were able to fully attack and beat the entire rebel. However, this was costly for us. That big of a problem, I think. And we have gained back this territory. So that's extremely nice to see. And I very much appreciate that. So we have further decisions available. Um, let's go for the siege over here. Siege of Ulstai. Now that we have amassed a large force of troops a couple of miles away from Ulstai, it is time to take back the city. The quest remains, however how it is to be done. Surround the city and starve out the enemy, move the division into the city and attack head on, or send a diplomat. Hmm. I think, you know, we are playing as the Mad Baron. Let's try to do a head-on attack over here. I expect that the, this will cost us uh, some manpower, but you know what? I think that's gonna be alright. Can we do further things? Oh yeah, we could fight the resistance over here. We could also bribe the Guys, I don't really want to do these things as long as we do have um, the dominant political power over here with nearly 50%. So honestly, I think that's great. With our forces moving head on into Ulstai, we were able to wipe out the bandits. However, in the crossfire, many civilians were killed. Ooh. Loss of base stability and some power. But overall, you know, I think that's alright. Ooh, the rebels are beginning to lose ground. It seems the rebels' method have not borne that many fruits. With the main troops having moved into the cities to hold out, loyalist forces were easily able to crush any stranglers they left behind. Also, they were able to take the Kadim and Ulstai. They have not been that successful elsewhere. Other cities fell back into our fold. Victory in the west could be only weeks away. We must secure our position politically. And indeed, it does look like we're doing relatively fine. And we have bypassed the national focus. That is lovely to see. Let's look at the details of that. So we can now at least finally pick a political uh, ideology. And that is the one down here. So there are many different passes down here. We must 
eventually secure power with selecting this path over here. Now all of these here are mutually exclusive so we should really decide which uh, path we do want to go down so honestly I think the biggest question is who are we supporting so this would decrease support for nationalist, nationalist populism it would give us some base support for this we would require both of these so Base stability honestly is neutral over here it seems if we're going for new builders because we do need perch and display so minus 70 we'd lose 100 political power we'd not base stability would be unchanged nationalist populism and authoritarian democrats would be reduced that's okay but it's not the most critical effect 150 political power in total over here it would be Socialist Democrats losing a little bit of power. We would be losing net some, some base stability. Yeah, army experience lost is also a little bit unnerving. Well, I mean, we could try to spend it before. Over here, we would be gaining a little bit of political power. Ignore the princes. But we'd ultimately be getting a little bit of change in authoritarian Democrat. But honestly, I think probably this is the best as we are not losing. This way we are not losing any political, uh, any, any base stability. And base stability is something that we cannot recover and it's currently at 16% which is pretty bad. Um, over here everyone else would be losing a little bit. That's nice, but no, I think I think we're doing well enough. We are at least, if not dominant, then we're at least uh, the best party over here. And the authority Democrats are not that big a threat. They're only at 18%, um, so that's not that bad. This would only change that by 5%. So you know what? We're going to ignore the princes over here. Princes are not truly the issue we are facing. We must focus on other avenues and perhaps even get support from them in defense defeating other factions. Gain a lot of political power sounds pretty lovely. Uh, we're going to complete that immediately. So we can go for uh, their assistance in destroying the Democrats, Social Democrats, or the National Populists. I think the yeah the Social Democrats are the much bigger threat. So uh, let's pick that one over here. Should also complete relatively quickly. Power struggle in the Mark League. For many years, the Mark League has been led by family elder Ma Fujang. In the clique, he was seen as the pillar of stability who had who would stop any power struggling, any power struggle occurring between the very divided families. Many in China even see him as the stabilizer in the Northwest, ending Tibetanian and our own aggression into Chinese soil. However, news have just reached us that he has passed away. Currently, he has been replaced by Ma Lin, but another Ma, Ma, but another Ma, Ma Bufang, and Ma Lin are already embroiled in a power struggle. So that is good to know, and indeed, it seems like we could end their struggle right there. Decisions available. Okay, which are these? Yeah, we could. Um, we do have enough political power to do either of these. I don't think we want that right now. Let's wait. Uh, what else we have in store for us? And we could even modify our government. Not going to do that right now. Uh, I think it's more important to deal with this issue here and have some political power uh, to be ready to be dealing with that. Maneuvers in Europe are not that important to us, but we have uh, secured this, so that is nice to see. Uh, we could get a little bit of war support and political... Let's do the Uga military parade. That is going to give us a little bit of political power. Base war support is nice. And change in our popularity is also good to see. Right, and um, for further stuff to be seen, Bandits Cross Nomadic Village. Once again, we have received word that a large group of bandits and rebels have attacked a village in of Normans in the west. Leaving hundreds dead, there are now also hundreds of refugees, mostly women and children, who need assistance to survive. Um, I very much think that we are going to spend the political power here to gain base stability, because we definitely do not. 
I don't want to give anyone else support and base stability is just better. Dumb Dummy Dizuguren gather force on the Yulangkwap border. Mongolian general Li Chuang has gathered, has generally stayed uninvolved with the power struggles hope happening currently in Uga. For many years, he has continued to live in Inner Mongolia, raiding Chinese shipments through the region. Now, we've just received supports that he gathered large forces at the border with the Mark League, likely to do some border raids. Well, that's lovely. Do go ahead, please. They are our enemies after all. Um, although it seems a little bit likely that that might escalate into war, so let's firstly um, have a look over here and see what we are going to give you here um, as as a perk. I'm tempted to go for cavalry expert, just for the flavor really, um, although cavalry defense is really not that important. Offensive doctrine might be a little bit nicer actually. Um, charismatic recovery rate, you know what, let's go for cavalry expert. We are, after all, trying to do that. And let's stop training because we need to regain a little bit of organization here. Uh, because I don't know what is going to happen with the Mark League here soon. Shuzing makes his choice. With his large force moving through Yulangkrab, a thought occurred to Shuzin. If he was to take Guzan, we, we would have de facto control of the province. With the Ma struggling with internal conflict, it should not be too difficult to move his force through the region and to take the city. Now it is whether he decides... Yes, go ahead, please. I would like to uh, weaken the Mark League. We have uh, completed that national focus, so that's nice. Uh, do we need all of them? Yes, we do. So that would reduce base stability, would cost us a little bit, but it would also decrease um, the power of the other factions, so that I think is nice. Assassination attempt on Ungern Sternberg. While riding his force in a parade through Urga, a sudden no noise deafened the crowds. A shot that echoed through the city that missed Baron Ungern by two inches. The assassin, a 23-year-old man, was shot almost immediately. Ungern ordered the mounting army to fire on the crowd, really, frenzied by the attempt on his life. The crowd dispersed in a panic as civilians or possible MAN agents were killed by Ungern troops. After the city had come down, the assassin the assassin has been identified as a men, men, member of the Mongol Adenam. However, many peasants in Oga claim this to be fabricated by our government. Though the Baron survived, his, this attempt showed weakness and the chaos Ungern caused by killing the possible MAN agents can't be good for our popularity. Well, at least he's about... Oh dear, minus 8%. We are now at 10% stability. That is really, really not that great. Um, oh, but we can increase that further here by reinforcing the troops in the west, so that we are going to definitely take that choice. Um, no changes here yet. We have finally finished our research into uh, the army equipment. Let's also deal with this. Um, let's, of course, produce the new infantry equipment variant over here. That should be okay. Hunger rides and Urga. With much of our focus going on on the western rebellion and the political uh, battle in Urga, the people of Urga have been forgotten. Many roads being destroyed or in, disre in disrepair. Much food from outside the city is no longer getting in. For some people, it has been weeks since they have gotten good proper meal. The people have decided to act. After another soup kitchen closed indefinitely in one of our poorest regions of the capital, people began smashing the shop windows and breaking in. After a few minutes, this began across the whole street, and within an hour, most of the city was in full rights. To stop this case, we must spend money to get food for the people. Seize the noble uh, money for food. That would increase their their support, however, and they are starting to look a little bit threatening at 23%. Force the monks to deal with that. That seems a little bit more like it. Or put it down with force. Now, I don't want to decrease our political power further. So, uh, sorry, our base stability further. So we are going to deal with this by forcing the monks to do that. That's going to increase their popularity a little bit. It's not too big a deal, I think. At 15%, um, they are pretty much okay. And we are still the dominant political force, so all in all, that's great. Also, we've just uh, dealt with this by arresting pretty much everyone, decreasing political stability by a lot. Now, really what remains to be done is enforcing officer loyalty over here which I dislike a little bit because it's going to decrease our army experience and we actually need a little bit of army experience. 
That being said, um, if we don't have that, then at least let's try to get a little bit of cavalry here to get combat with 10. I think that's fine. Do we want to do support artillery? Well, we don't really have support artillery, so I don't think we can do that anyway. Let's look at... You know what? I think our cavalry divisions are what we want to deal with mostly. So you know what? Let's make a duplicate and let's call that calf uh, plus artillery and give you support artillery. Let's save this up so that at least we are decreasing the waste here in uh, artillery in, in stuff. So we don't really can equip that for now, but that's going to be all right and should be okay. And let's yeah, let's deal with this. We are already doing that. Great and lovely. Rishikin massacres cities in Marun. Boris Rishikin, a brutal general and Ongin loyalist, has no real idea what is happening in Ogre. When the Western Rebellion began, he was sent to Marun to make sure rebellion activity did not spread across the whole nation. Due to the chaos in the capital, we have been unable to contact him for months. We've now finally learned that what learned what has happened in Moron. Some refugees from the city arriving in Noga today have spoken of how Rishin has run the city as his own personal fiefdom, increasing the taxes massively to be kept for himself and massacring civilians by the hundreds if they even question his leadership. No doubt this will make us less popular. Oh, but we are gaining some base stability. That is lovely, although. Our party uh, support loss over here is definitely not good to see, especially as most of the other guys are now starting to look a little bit like they might be dominating us. Kudita and Siam is not much of concern for us right now. How are we looking in terms of organization and stuff? Well, it's okay. Force officer loyalty done. Does that give us... Yeah, it's give it does give us some party support. And we're going to go for finally getting our stuff to do. Shuxi beaten after almost being able to take Guam from the Mark Lake. Shuxi and his forces have been beaten back. They fought hard, but they were unable. Uh, well, that's that's unfortunate. Lamas came out in support for the um, Buddhists, though through the chaos has engulfed Ogre for many months now. The Lamas or some of the ma main monasteries have remained rather silent on which side they support. Though the monastery currently houses the 7th, <laughs> the Lamas have so far refused. Well, it's going to increase their political power. It's not great. They are starting to look like one of the contending factions over here now. Something in Italy doesn't concern us that much. We're going to, of course, look at the world basically once we come out of our internal troubles over here, which should happen right away over here. So we finally secured power for us, and that does open us uh, up to a couple of other things over here. We could... Gain centralized power for more political um, gain per day. That would be great. It will also allow us to do some support for ourselves, which would again be great, and increase stability. Stability is a big concern for me right now. Could also do that over here. Lose political support there. I don't think we have a Russia policy yet, or that we can deal with this so far that would it that it would give us a lot of stuff division organization plus five percent max planning would be nice manpower would of course be great as well on the other hand really none of this is is extru well one research slot would be really really nice stand alone so either we go go for being alone or for russia could increase military Funding, which would also give us a good number of things. Especially here with the cavalry attack. I think that would be great. Uh, let's also have a look at what we can do over here. So we could go for the medic economy. Just getting a couple of things really. Just for our research bonus for land doctrine would be nice. And more, more power for our guys. Land doctrine. It would be great to, to get that. Mongolian army, research bonus, research bonus, recruitment effort. Recruitable population, it would be nice, I think. It's not that that much required right now, though. Let's go for centralization of power here. It's going to take a couple of days. Um, but, oh! Angen Sternberg defeats the Mongol rebels. Much like Tibet, news from Mongolian capital is sparse. Well... 
For many years, the status quo of the nation has been the leadership of the Russian Baron Roman von Ungern Sternberg. However, recently, news have come out that after rebellion in the West, Ungern's rule was seriously under threat from all sides. Well, his army fought in the West. However, we did it. So that's nice. Does it stop now, please? Doesn't, doesn't seem like it. All right, we're going to continue to reinforce our troops here in the West with our political power. Just to increase the stability, that would be great. Um, and also give us a little bit of support. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, Rest Western Rebellion has finally been crushed. That's nice. We are getting a lot of base stability, political power. Good. Very, 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 very good indeed. National Spirit Western Banditry. Okay, can we deal with that, please? Pacify them. Have at least three divisions down there. Okay, um, you guys, can I please ask you to garrison only this area down here and just come over there, please, and thank you. Yeah, you're doing that fine and lovely. We're going to send our cavalry there. I do consider them to be our elite. That is nice. Come on, do get down there. Decisions available. Yeah, let's try to pacify them. Maybe we should send a little bit more. We had 50% now, but the other factions are also not that not that bad. Ungus Purge, in the past month it has become clear that the, to the Baron that the, his rule is constantly in danger. Therefore, he has declared it is time to examine our current military staff and decide whether they are loyal to Ungern or whether it's time they saw the bullet. And let's briefly check out who we've got over here. So we've got another field marshal. Old guard, war hero, it's not that great, but your stats are actually relatively okay. Yeah, let's see, let's see what we've got in that regard, um, and what's going to come up. Status of Manalibre, God, these names, really. Um, it's not you. It's not you. Can I, can I replace that? So, who are you? You are Manalibre, yeah, it's okay, it's our field marshal. Your stats are decent. We could end him. You don't need another field marshal though, honestly. Let's end him. It's probably going to be a question for each of these guys. Probably for each single one. Uh, I'm going to not read all of them, but um, yeah, it's still going to be interesting. Nikolai Kazagori. Who are you? Nikolai. You. Infantry leader. Hmm. Level 2. Do have a couple of other infantry leaders though. And honestly, you have a much better. You know what? We're going to end him. I don't think we need that many generals. Otherwise, we're just going to generate a couple with our political power once we can do that. Togot, that's you. Honestly, you are pretty great. Um, I think we can keep you. War hero, cavalry officer. I mean, your stats over here are not that great, but Fortress Buster and just Guerrilla Fighter. I do like these. Status of the officers. Gain war support or... What, so what are we going to lose rather? War support? Honestly, I don't think war support is that important. So we, you know what? We're going to decrease that. And hopefully that's going to be it. Right, what else? Um, status of Altan. Altan, my friend, who are you? You. A trickster. Just a level one. I don't think you're that important. Right. Any further decisions that we can take? Have centralized power now. That's great. We could destroy the socialists. Would give us stability and war support. That would be great. Or we could just increase our uh, party support. Our party support is looking actually relatively fine. So honestly, I think... We'd much rather like to destroy the socialists for the stability here, mostly. I'm really not that happy with 29%. So, we are going to get land, doctrine, research, speed, minus, political power. Eh, it was necessary, I think. Anyway, that's good enough. Going to destroy them. That's going to cost us a little bit of political power. Mobile warfare is done. So that is nice. Um, but with a negative time to research, 1,000 days. Yeah. No, I don't think that's that's really that worthwhile. Um, we are not going to research land doctrine. I could go for fighters, um, but you know what? I'm mostly 
uh, interested in the industry for now so that we are producing a little bit more in terms of infantry equipment that would be great um, and you know what? honestly can we actually produce artillery we can so let's actually go ahead and try to produce a little bit of that Indochina is declaring independence uh, lovely to see as well and what can we do in terms of economy Early mobilization none of that is possible for now extensive conscription you know what that's okay for now we can't do any better I think could of course go for any of that industrial company do we have infantry equipment weapons manufacturer soft attack plus five percent breakthrough five percent that would be great Honestly, that would be great. Are we researching that for now? No, we're not. We just had done that. So we don't really need that for now. Okay, that's okay. Right, that has gone away. That's uh, perfectly lovely. Then uh, what we're actually going to do is we are going to ask you here to form a front line for the entire army group. Okay, you know what? Let's delete all of this. Let's have you define a front line so that it's actually both of these armies, hopefully. And gonna assign a front line move. Come on, what's that? It's not what I wanted. Offensive line, a little bit like this. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. Will you be doing that though? No. Okay, well, because they were still on that line, I'm gonna do that again. So do have patience here. Yeah, that looks much better. Right, and you know what? Just over here is fine. So you're going to come down now. Yes, perfectly lovely. What You might actually want to train up a little bit as well. Shijang kick erupts in war. So, more war in China. Interesting. Okay, you are now all there, kind of. Soon. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's have you train up that you're gaining a little bit of experience over here and we might be gaining a little bit of army experience you would need a lot of army experience actually some war in Arabia I think yes indeed so yeah okay over here things seem to be fine we are destroying the socialists Belgian declaration of independence uh, which might very much trigger a war in Europe. So I think uh, Belgium is puppet state of Germany. So they might be coming in and try to deal with that. Russia, so far very stable. The US, pretty stable um, so far. Only war in China. So I think it's only the... Uh, you, you had been in war before, right? So yeah, you are in war down there. Is anyone else in war down here? Can I see just an, a declaration or some, some notification? It's just you guys. The left Kuomintang. Interesting. I didn't think that faction was in before. Right. So you're training up. Should be okay. You do have a lot of attack bonus there. That looks pretty decent. Yeah. So I think this is a very good place to put in a cut. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series. Um, and yeah, I think next time we're going to go for Marklik or something. Um, going to be building up our army a little bit from here. Our manpower is looking very low. And I think that's mostly due to some of our negative um, effects down here. But thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you around. Do leave a like and all of that. Bye bye.